the current trend for performing nerve blocks in regional anesthesia is to use ultrasound guidance. These machines are, however, expensive and beyond the reach of a large part of the anesthesia population. Currently, about 80% of all regional anesthesia is still performed using a nerve stimulator. Also, ultrasound guidance requires a learned skill with a definitive learning curve and requires proper training and education. Well, there's a worldwide movement to using ultrasound guided uh, ultrasound blocks more and more because it has certain advantages of, of locating the nerves uh, exactly where they are. It helps you to uh, identify aberrant uh, nerve placements uh, where nerves are where they are not usually expected to be. And also you can actually visualize the needle approaching the nerve so it should theoretically eliminate nerve injuries. So worldwide the use is to using ultrasound but these machines are very expensive and which puts them out of reach of a large section of the anesthesia population because they just simply can't afford the machines. Unfortunately, because all the attention has been focused on the ultrasound machines, the technology of nerve stimulators has lagged behind. And this is where the, the Savant nerve stimulator is very unique in that it's a very high-tech machine with a lot of high-tech features, but it has the most important feature is that you can is the mapping probe and you can map the nerve and I'd locate the nerve percutaneously before you make a needle puncture. This brings it very close to achieving what an ultrasound machine does and that is locating the nerve um, to prevent somebody who's not quite sure of the anatomy puncturing the skin and poking around looking for the nerve and also even in the hands of an experienced uh, uh, nerve uh, uh, blocker the nerve might not be where it should be. There are anatomical variations. However, the mapping probe allows you to identify the nerve percutaneously and you can do your nerve puncture accurately. This saves both time and makes the block more accurate at the same time. The Stimpod consists of the stimulator pulse generator, a nerve mapping probe, a lead that connects to the stimulating needle, the positive return lead, now we have the machine um, in, the, in the mapping mode. Here we have the pulse width. In order to get the best stimulation through the skin, one needs to have that on 0.3 milliseconds. And by pressing that button, it changes to 0.3 milliseconds. And as one has the probe in place, one will raise the current until you get to twitch in the arm in the correct place. So now it's on 0.3. So we'll proceed to do our block. At the start of the procedure, landmarks are marked on the skin to give an approximate idea of where the nerve is to be expected. There we have the patient's neck area that has been draped and prepared for doing the interscaling block. There we have the posterior border of the sternomastoid muscle. Uh, this, is, this line marks the level of the cricoid cartilage, which gives us an idea where C5, C6 level in the, in the neck is. Here's the external jugular vein, and here is the interscaling groove, which we have palpated digitally. There's our finger in the interscaling groove. That is where we expect to get our brachial plexus. When using the stim pod, one can locate the nerve through the skin by placing the mapping probe where one would expect the nerve to be. And when one uh, uh, stimulates the nerve through the skin, one can look through the skin percutaneously to find the ideal twitch. In this case, we're looking for the uh, forearm flexors, as we see there. Now, I know exactly where my nerve is under the skin. When one gets the twitch, one must also try and look to find the area of maximum twitch, because the probe's point is round and can be stimulating the nerve a bit from the side. Your greatest uh, current density is in front of the needle, so we'll try and get the front of the needle over the nerve to get the best twitch. The mapping probe is held in position to identify the nerve and the needle is approached right up to the point of the mapping probe. As soon as the needle touches the skin, 
the machine automatically switches from stimulating on the mapping probe to stimulating on the needle. One has to then change the current to 1.2 milliamps and the needle is advanced through the skin and the twitch is obtained right there. One can now take away the mapping probe and identify the twitch and there we have it. We reduce our current down from and we're still getting the slight twitch. When the block is performed this way, between 5 and 10 milliliters of local anesthetic is usually sufficient. But it's very, very accurately placed. One can see that the needle's tip is exactly in the interscaling groove. Remove the needle and that will be a successful block. What are the advantages of using the Stimpod nerve locating technique compared to other nerve stimulators? The thing is that, um, is that when you locate the nerve percutaneously with the mapping probe, you can hold it there in position and you bring your needle up to the tip of the probe and as soon as the needle touches the skin, the machine automatically changes from stimulating on the probe to stimulating on the needle. With other nerve mappings, you will map the nerve and maybe mark the skin where the nerve is and then go to the needle and try to locate the nerve where the mapper said it was. With the Savant machine, you hold the nerve, almost hold it in position with a bit of pressure from the uh, probe and you put your needle exactly there uh, and that's where, the, the nerve, that's where you find the nerve. So the big feature is that it changes automatically from the one to the other on contact with the skin.